Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I'm Stephen Gemanya. His name is Moviru Stephen. And the one who is Kagoya Afwa, Mkwano Gwange. Together with Kagoya Afwa. Tuliba Mchifochino. We are in this place. Eranga Tusumbiwa, Dr. Joseph Ruwama Serumaga. We pray from here and we are pastored by Dr. Joseph Serumaga Ruwama. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank all the ministers in this night. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for them. Uh, there is something brief we are going to tackle in this little time we have. In scriptures, the different mysteries in it. And today we are going to be seeing one mystery to just remind you about it or else you had forgotten it or perhaps you have not been focusing on it. And thereafter, the worship team will come back. I know even our brother will still be around to Take us deeper in worship. Hallelujah. Amen. The mystery I want us to talk about. It's a mystery of the first child. The first born. The first born. Amen. You will get to know how it concerns you. But it is a mystery in the Bible that you ought to know. Because there is somewhere you're concerned about it. There is somehow it touches you. When you really know, need to know what mystery this is. If you read in the scriptures, if you read in the scriptures, God continually focused on this mystery of the firstborn. He used to cling on it so much. And the Lord loves so much the first things. Because the first fruits are always his. The reason why he loves the first fruits is, is this mystery of the firstborn. It's it's amazing that God has a son. Scriptures tell us John 3 16 and so he loved the world and he gave him his only begotten son. If someone has only one son that means he's the firstborn. Now the Lord didn't just give us a firstborn but he gave us the only thing he had. He gave, he gave us the only son he had. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you continue reading the scriptures you will see that this mystery of the firstborn that when God was redeeming the children of Israel is the last weapon that he used when the Israelites were still in Egypt and Pharaoh was still clinging with them he didn't want to let them go God knew what to use and he used the mystery of the firstborn and it had so many conditions there are so many things and terms and conditions that had to be done for this mystery to be used and whoever didn't do that act 
lost out. He lost their firstborn. The first affliction that the Lord had used. We have conditions Many conditions are not seen concerning the first afflictions than this of the mystery of the firstborn. In another way, the children of Israel had not been part of it. It was so much between Moses and Aaron that he was always with when they had gone before Pharaoh. But when it came this last mystery for the children of Israel to be released, then the Lord involved every child of Israel. Why were they involved? That they may know what this mystery of the firstborn means. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's amazing that even when the Lord wanted to save this world, it, it takes hold of his firstborn and he gives him to the world. The only son he had. It's him he took that he gave in for the world to be saved. Therefore, this mystery of the firstborn is so crucial. Now, what is it? Why does the Lord cling so much on this mystery of the firstborn. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49. And we read the first part of verse 3. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you say your Uganda? Genesis chapter 49. We are going to read part of verse 3. This is what it says. You are my firstborn. My might. Now he has said to explain what the firstborn means unto him. This was Jacob. When he called his sons to speak to them. That's how we get the words that explain the firstborn. Reuben. Reuben. Remember, Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob. You are my firstborn. My might. And the beginning of my strength. And the beginning of my strength. The excellence of dignity. And the excellence of power. Praise the Lord. These words are so crucial. He has told him, You are my might. And the beginning of my strength. The excellence of dignity. And the excellence of power. That's what seals the mystery of the firstborn. That's why the Lord clings so much on the firstborn. I told you we're going to wind up when you know how it concerns you. Praise the Lord. Whenever you see the Lord clinging on this mystery of the firstborn, 
Just though it means his mightness. It means the beginning of his strength. It means the excellence of dignities. And the greatest excellence of power. Now you can't go back and refer to the time he killed the firstborns of Egypt. That when he was killing them. He was killing the maidens of the pharaohs. He was killing the beginning of their strength. He was killing the excellence of their dignities. And he was also killing their power. And when the firstborns died, Pharaoh then let go the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. The mystery of the firstborn. We are keenly considering as to why the Lord clings on it. Why does the Lord use it continually? We have seen so far that he has used it so far two times. He used it to redeem the children of Israel. And also to bring you salvation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a mystery of the firstborn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we fully understood what the firstborn means unto the owner. Let me repeat it for you. The firstborn means the might. Let me speak as though I'm speaking concerning my firstborn. That my firstborn means my mightness. It means the beginning of my strength. It means the excellence of my dignity. It means the excellent power. And likewise unto God, that is how it is. That the firstborn of God focus so much unto this because you're going to revisit them. That the firstborn of God means the mightiness of God. Means the beginning of the strength of God. Means the excellent power of God. And it means the excellent power of him. That is the firstborn of God. That is what he is unto God. That is what he is unto God. Praise the Lord. If the Lord is, consider, is keenly considering this issue of the firstborn, most of the time he doesn't follow the natural order. And there is a reason as to why it doesn't follow the natural order. If you don't understood it, point at yourself and say, I am the reason. We are going to see some instances when the Lord didn't follow the natural order of the firstborn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why has the Lord been exchanging 
The, the one who would have been the firstborn, he exchanges with another. The Lord has a reason. We are going to see the reason. But what I want you to understand is that the reason of the firstborn the reason as to why you have to be walking this world as you are to be focusing as you are to be beside the firstborn and the things we've seen in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 3. There are many instances we are going to see that concern the firstborn, but right now we're going to read in Numbers chapter 8. Numbers 8, 16 to 18. We see that God exchanges Reuben as the firstborn and takes Levi as the firstborn. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I told you that most of the time the Lord doesn't follow our natural order concerning the firstborn. And in the scriptures, the many times he has been exchanging. Verse 16. Verse 16. Muchifochi we're in the book of Numbers, chapter 8, from verse 16 to verse 18. Verse 16. For they are only given to me from among the children of Israel. I have taken them for myself, instead of all who opened the womb, who opened the womb, the firstborn of all the children of Israel. Verse 17. For all the firstborn among the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them to myself. Verse 18. I have taken the lives instead of all the firstborn of the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. Remember, Jacob became Israel. And this Israel, all call him Jacob, had 12 children. But Levi was not the firstborn. Reuben was the firstborn. Now, in the journey to Canaan, the Lord is says exchange that instead of Reuben, it takes Levi as the firstborn. And remember the scripture told us that he has called the firstborn his. It Therefore, whenever you read about the firstborn, just know it is the Lord. Why is the first fruit of the firstborn the Lord? You go back to Genesis 49 and verse 3. When you know what the firstborn means, if you know what the firstborn means, all the words in Genesis 49 verse 3, then you all see that those are the qualities of God. The, great, the greatest in my That's the beginning of the strength. Is the one having excellent power. 
speak about our God. Now, if we focus them on the first bond, that's why it says to take it back to himself. Because it doesn't exchange the first bonds with any other thing. Now, what represents what we've seen in Genesis 49 verse 3? It ought to be for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us read in Genesis 48. Uh, and verse 12. Here we see Manasseh and Ephraim. These were children of Joseph. These children of Joseph, they are brought to Jacob to be prayed for. He was about to die. And because the Lord was exchanging that even the people who was exchanging, they had not yet known this issue of the firstborn. If you are to read the whole chapter, you will see that Joseph contradicts so much with his father Jacob. And he was saying, although Jacob was doing a mistake, yet it wasn't so. But because I told you that the Lord has been exchanging, it so happened even unto these children. An exchange took place. Genesis 48 and verse 12. Yusuf Nabajamuma Amen. Amen. We're in Genesis 48 from verse 12. So Joseph brought them from beside his knees and he bowed down his face to the earth. Verse 13. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand towards Israel's left hand and Manasseh with his left hand towards Israel's right hand and brought them near him. Verse 14. Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Nasabira Yusufu, Omukisa, Nayogeranti, Katonda Waba Jajabange, Ibrahim Neisaka, Guevata Ambuliranga Mumasoge, Katonde ya. Eandi sang in Nakuzangezo na Okutu Sadero, Malaika. Malaika, eya nunula mububibu na, awo mkisaba renzi, neri nyari ange, diri tumi wanga kubo, neri nyari abajajabwe, ibla imu na isaka, irani bafuke, ichibine, chinene, wakatimu unsi. Nego tuko mao. We can end there, we continue from o, verse 15. Oja kongera osomo mareyo. You continue to read verse 15, and he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed him from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. I'm showing that the Lord has been exchanging the firstborn. I told you he doesn't follow our natural order as a person. I've seen him two times when he's exchanging. Let's end with this. You know this story very well. And Esau and Jacob. 
In Genesis 27, from verse, Genesis 27, from verse 1 to the end, the whole chapter. We are going to read it. Wawanfu wanyuma ne itulaba okuanyisa okwaliwo. It's quite long and so nice to read, but we see the exchange that was there. But in brief, tulaba nga ekisera kyatuka nga Isaka natero okufa. We see a time comes when Isaac was about to die. Era naita omwana we omubereberye. And he called his first born that he can take hold of something and put it in his father's hand before he prays for him a blessing. Praise the Lord. And here there was going to be a chief kind of exchange. An exchange that was making a prophecy and to us Praise the Lord. If you read the entire story, I didn't want to read it because of time. Okay. 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 Praise the Lord. The first scriptures from verse 1 to verse 18. We see that the mother of these children has heard what they told the firstborn. And the same words that the father told him to do. And he went to the crowd that was in at home. And he took hold of a lamb or a goat. He killed and prepared it so well. And he prepared to take it before his father Isaac. That he may be blessed. Because the firstborn is always blessed. Because it's always the strength of the father. Because the maintenance of the father dwells in him first. So likewise, the father wants to take hold of what he has. And puts them all in the firstborn. Now the mother knew the mystery of being the firstborn. And also prepared so well Jacob. That, that he may go and get the blessing of the firstborn. Remember if you read from the previous chapters. What explains these children. Esau's body was different from that of Jacob. And that even caused Jacob to fear that when the my father know, and Jacob's mother, Rebecca, Rebecca devised all means and he got wool and dressed it up with them together with the clothing of, Je of Esau that, that Jacob may be able to go before his father Isaac that he can get what he wants to get. Let us read verse 18. Genesis. We are in Genesis chapter 27, verse 18. So he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob answered and said, I am your father. 
And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. Does it need to be specified? He would have just told him, it is me, Esau. But he added that I am also your firstborn. Wherever you see the firstborn, you, you go back to Genesis 49, verse 3. And, and you replace with those words that explain the firstborn. That's when what es Jacob was, was replying that his Esau, the firstborn, will make meaning to you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Verse 19, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit and eat of my game that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Esau. Now for us we know it is Jacob but Isaac knows it is Esau. And he said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. Because Isaac knew that many people desire for this place, position of the firstborn. Many people need this blessing of the firstborn. And they can devise all means to come in the position of the firstborn. Because you see the way he's speaking as if he was skeptical. The issue of the firstborn. The mystery of the firstborn. I want us to reach where it concerns us. Jacob didn't believe it. Verse 22, so Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Mark that scripture. We are going to revisit it. Now, and verse 23 he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother's brother Esau's hands so he blessed him that was great victory and if it didn't happen I, would, I don't know where I would have been praise the Lord now we've seen that Jacob for him to be able to get the blessing of the firstborn, it necessitated him to dress up Esau. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And without dressing up Esau, Isaac. Jacob was not going to get anything from the father Isaac. Why? Because he was not the firstborn. And the mother Rebecca 
Ateka teka Yakobo. He prepares Jacob. Okusovola okufuna omukisa gwachitawe ogomwano mobereberye. For him to be able to get the blessing of his father for the firstborn. Kale ateka teka Yakobo. Let's say he prepares she prepares Jacob. Yakobo okufuka bilibye twala bye mulubereberye anamu mwenda olunyoro okusatu. For jo, for Jacob to become what we saw in Genesis 49 verse 3. Tubijukira do we remember them? Do we remember them? What was the first one? And the second? What was the third? And the fourth? And the fourth? Mama Rebecca, take a take a Yakobo, a sobole okufu kachino, eri. Now Rebecca the mother prepares Jacob to become what we read in Genesis 49 verse 3 unto the father Jacob and the father Isaac. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to let you know that likewise in our generation we have a soul. We have the firstborn. We have the firstborn. You would have clapped for it if you had understood it. I've said also in our generation. We have the firstborn. We have what we ought to dress up with. If we do not dress him. If our lives do not get into him. We are not going to get anything from the Father. Because in our generation, He put the firstborn. Amen. This happened long ago. Before I got revealed unto this story, before I even know how it concerns me, I first saw Jacob as someone who just takes things by force. And the time came and I started hating Esau. And I even didn't know the meaning or the importance of Esau in Jacob's life. But let us understand that Isaac he had only accepted Esau and according to what we've keenly considered only Esau was responsible for getting this blessing. But the Lord knew that there is Mubiru who will need the blessing. There is Mubiru who will need acceptance. And he says, if this exchange doesn't take place, I would have lost out. Because if you go and read about the life of Esau, Esau, Esau got a blessing. Also, what we call a blessing. You read the Bible. You will see the time Esau meets again with Jacob when he has a lot of things. That was being prepared for me who didn't have anything. It was being prepared for you who is like me. Praise, Praise the Lord. Let us read some scriptures. Um, Let us read Colossians. Colossians. The book, the book of Colossians, chapter 1. Okay. All right. Colossians, chapter 1. I urge you to read the whole chapter. Because of time, we are going to begin from verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God. 
the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or principalities and powers, all things were created through him and, and for him and he is before all things and in him all things co consist and he is he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in he may be he may have all the preeminence praise the lord I don't know how many times they've repeatedly said the word firstborn. Whenever they speak firstborn, you go back to Genesis 49 and you understand. Praise the Lord. This is the firstborn of all creation. Let us read verse 19 to 23. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him. Having brought peace through the world to reconcile all things on the earth or in heaven. Now we're speaking what we will. Verse 21. And you who were once aliens and, and, and enemies in your mind by your wicked works yet now he has reconciled you. Now he reconciled us. It means we were exchanged. Let's continue. In the body of his flesh through death. To, to present you holy, verse 22. In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If you indeed continue in the faith, grounded, when you're steady fast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you had, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ. He is the firstborn of heaven. He is the firstborn from the dead. And he is the reason as to why. For the Lord wanting to redeem us. As who were Jacob. As who didn't owe to get anything. As who were not blessed before the Father. It said that to bring Jesus. Jesus. And when he brings Jesus, there are things he tells us to do. Jesus died on the cross. There is something we owe to do. There is an exchange we owe to do. So that we are able to be accepted before the Father. Remember that Isaac didn't pray blessing. Until Jacob drew close to him, and at a time, that surely this is Esau. But yet we know that Jacob was dressed up with Esau. 
Praise the Lord. We are tackling the mystery of the firstborn. We have seen how it has been exchanged in the Old Testament. But it was a prophecy that had come to fetch on us the aliens. It had come to fetch on us. Us who had been rejected. I don't know how you had been rejected. But understand it. Before the Lord, you didn't have any portion. Before, before the Lord, you were not accepted. Until you brought the firstborn of all creation. That he reconciles you. That he conjoins us. That we can't get right from the Father. Today we ask and we are given. Today we call upon and he gives us. But we call him because we are dressed up with Jesus Christ. If you leave Christ, if only eyes that guess know that this is not Esau, you're not going to get anything. And Isaac, he prayed for Esau a blessing. Praise the Lord. The mystery of the firstborn. Ladies and gentlemen, we ought to cling unto the firstborn. It's the reason as to why Jesus tells the disciples in John chapter 15. Let us read John chapter 15. We're going to wind up with that verse. We want to cry unto the Lord that he exchanges our lives, that he takes our lives. Because we've seen people who exchange the lives. We see Paul, the way he exchanged his life. We see the apostles of Jesus, the way they exchange the lives. Paul was no longer fearing death. He knew that death was profitable. Because the life he had was not his. And this is the life he walked in. It wasn't his. But he was dressed with some other thing. But because he had embraced the firstborn. That's why God did other life. When John chapter 15. That chapter talks about the vine. You are going to read few scriptures. You can read the entire chapter. I love the last part. Because we put so much in it as one again. And we quote it so much when we are praying. But now we are also going to quote it. When you've really understood who are you, who am I who is quoting this? Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of its soul unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Here there is dressing up. There is dressing up the other garments that accepts us before the Father. And when he gets it, when he smells it, he has the aroma of Jesus Christ. Or else, if you go in your garments as you, he's going to hear a disobedient person. You hear an angry person. He's going to hear fear. But whenever we dress the, the garment of Jesus Christ as he urges us to abide in him it means when we go before the Father he's going to see what is in Genesis 49 verse 3. Okay. Verse 5, I am the vine. You are the branches. You who abides in me and I in him bear as much fruit. For without me without me let it be a 
upon us that without Jesus Christ without the firstborn wow wow without the firstborn you are nothing kubanga <laughs> For without me, you can do nothing. What will program we better to radio? There is always a program on the radio. In a man FM. In a man FM. It's called Don't Forsake Fellowshipping. I'll add you to listen to it. We normally say that we do not they read scriptures. We are not so extravagant with the scriptures, but here I feel I'm becoming extravagant. Because every word in this verse, it needs someone to keep me consider and you first meditate upon it because these are meaningful words. If anyone is, does not abide in me, he, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, this is the most important. You will ask what you desire. I shall be done for you. We love it so much when we are praying. And we normally quote it. The Lord, you said whatever Whenever we desire. Whatever we ask in your name. It shall be done for us. Ladies and gentlemen, the right person who ought to cut this is someone who is dressed up with the garment of Esau. He is someone dressed up with the garment of the firstborn. Praise the Lord. Let us dress up with the garment of the firstborn. We have understood who the firstborn in our generation is. And they have told us without him we can do nothing. Let us abide in him. Let us abide in him. Then we shall be able to speak anything that it will be done. Friends, are there some people who are abiding in him? I'll add you to read the book of Acts. Because this word, they are spoken among some of those who are in the book of Acts of the Apostles. That we see when they were abiding in him, were that things they did? How were the lives? And then we compare no, bu, bu. with your life. We, ye, itan, ti, ali, mu, ye. You who calls yourself as though you abide in him, oh, la, and then you consider. Nto, bu, bu, la, mu, bu. And see whether your life is compared to the lives of the other who first walked and who first abided in him. Why are we reading the book of Acts of the Apostles? That we may, that we may see the lives of the first people who walked in him. How the lives looked like. And also us. Who say we abide in him. We shall get our right position. Otherwise. 
or else we ought to obey him again and dress up with him. If you discover that things don't walk the way they ought to, then you have to go back and dress up with him. And you go back and ask him to exchange your life. You go back and tell him, God, may we exchange our lives. I have come that we exchange. Because I may be living my own life. I may be disobeying what my mother Rebecca is telling me to do. Because we see where the fears of Jacob were. But the mother Rebecca took up the responsibility and prepared Jacob so well. We also have a church. We have a church that prepares us. If you don't know how you're going to dress up with Jesus, if you don't know how you're going to abide in him, continue to fellowship continue to come in this place you're going to be taught how to dress up Jesus the things of he examines the heart we don't want to hear that you have to dress up Jesus you have to be working together with him and then you will be able to get something from the throne of our father praise the Lord praise the Lord let me beseech you to stand up on your feet I welcome the worship team we have to dress up Jesus. We have to exchange our lives and we give it to him. That he gives us his life. The truth is, he already died on the cross. He did his part. And then he said it is finished. He did the work. You have to dress because Jacob dressed then he was accepted before his father praise the Lord the mystery of the firstborn that's how it concerns us after you've exchanged life after you've dressed up with Jesus then the other the issues in Genesis 49 verse 3 when the Lord looks at you, he sees them Abba in you. Kulabamu. He sees them in you. Let me remind you of them. Whenever you dress up Jesus, because Jesus is the first born of all creation, he is the first born of the heaven. That's why he's brought on the world. We did not just become children just understand it today we do not just become the children of God but when we dress with the firstborn we become his firstborn if Jesus is the firstborn just like Colossians 1 has told us he was raised in glory and he comes in John 15 and tells us about him just like he obeyed him now and then he comes in John 15 and tells us about him just like he obeyed him now and then we would have become what is Genesis 49 verse 3 we would have become that means we become his maintenance the beginning of his strength you are the strength the origin of the strength of God the strength of God begins from you and to others that means you have become the excellent divinity you will have become the excellent power ladies and gentlemen let us embrace Jesus we have no other option 
tired of losing out. We are tired of being despised. We are tired of not being people of importance in our lives. Let us embrace Christ. Let us embrace Christ. Let us dress up Christ. We are going to become his likeness. We are going to become his strength. We are going to become his excellent glory. We are going to become the excellent power of God. It has get songs of worship and then after we shall pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the word. Father, as we come in your presence, our heart desire is to live in you as you live in us. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. You can just lift up your hands to him. Start speaking to him. You can start speaking to your father tonight. Draw me close to you.
hallelujah There is no one else like you You're the answer to it all Jesus Oh You mend the broken hearts You're the answer to it all So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never, oh my soul, I worship His holy name, bless the Lord, say, Bless the Lord of oh my soul. Oh my Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Oh, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship. Oh, my God, 
let it be known of me that I began to be alive. This is the day. This is my day. This is my season. It's my season of blossoming. It's my season of blossoming. Birobiange biakumulisa. Birobiange biakumulisa. Golo kokero mulimo. I arise up for the work. Golo kokero kokora. I arise up to do it. Golo kokero kubo mulamo. I arise up to be alive. Muri nyari a yes. In the name of Jesus. Take my hand. Tualo mukono kwanke. Yesunja <laughs> Kuwabula mwangenga kabonero Hakokwe wa yochori haka ungezi karero Uta nulokole na muunzengo kwa gala kwa wekuli mokama Mere chivye chepei Mere chivye chomu wendo Mere chivye chakarosa Mumule mbegu no mokama Mere chivye chepei Patch me O Lord Patch me of all iniquity Patch me of all Patch me of all residues that I may be a vessel, that I may be a vessel in the master hands, user, in the hands of the master, that you make me, that you may make me into your own.
Put your chairs together. Here in the valley of prayer, when it comes to three o'clock in the morning, we do nothing else. What we do is to pray the African way. In fact, we go deeper and we pray the UCC way. We know how to pray our way. Some of us are okay. Some of us are okay. But to some of us, but to some of us, we want this hour. We wait for this hour. We anticipate for it. We look at our clocks. We look at our clocks. Tick tock waiting for the carrier's time. It's an appointed time. It's a carrier's time. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's our hour. I pray someone jubilates in their spirit knowing that the hour is now. In that anointing, we welcome our dear pastor, Pastor Sakira Ronald, to usher us in a great anointing in the name of Jesus. Welcome.